Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today you will learn how to find function values and complete function tables in today's appropriately named lesson, functions. Now what is a function? A function is a relation in which every member of the domain, which is our input value, is paired with exactly one member of the range, which is our output value. An example of a function is m equals 20n, where m represents the amount of money earned and n represents the number of lawns mowed. In this example, n is the independent variable. The number of lawns mowed is independent, and m is the dependent variable. And when you think about that, the dependent variable, which was money, depends on the independent variable and the amount of lawns mowed. If you low mow one lawn, you get $20. Two lawns, $40. But that dependent variable here depends on the independent. So what do we think an independent variable might mean? Well, I think this is the variable that can change. And as we talked about in the lawn example, the dependent variable is the variable that is affected by when, actually just poor English there, is affected when the independent variable changes. Now for each situation, determine which unknown is the dependent variable and which is the independent variable. Well, for our situation where the equation C equals 99 cents N represents the total cost for N music downloads, our independent variable, the one we can control, is the number of downloads. The dependent variable, well, it, the cost depends on the number of downloads, so that's our dependent variable. So the equation D equals 4 and a half H represents the number of miles D Amber can run in H hours. Well, she can control the hours. So the number of hours is our independent variable, since that can change. Whereas the number of miles depends on how long she runs. And since the number of miles depends on how long she runs, the number of hours, that's our dependent variable. The equation S equals G plus 3 represents the final score of the game S after G goals in the final period. Well, the number of goals here is our independent variable. Whereas the final score is the dependent variable, as the final score depends on how many goals are scored in that final period. Now, in order to find function values, to find the value of a function for a certain number, substitute the number for the variable x. Now this is read f of x or function of x. So f of x or function of x equals 15 times x. x is the input, the domain. f of x, as it's read, is the output or the range. So in order to find our function values, the first step is to rewrite the function. So f of x equals x minus 4. So we write the function. Then we're going to substitute this 2 in for the x in the rule. So f of 2, so the function when x is 2, equals, well, 2 
minus 4. So, f of 2 equals whatever 2 minus 4 is, and that is negative 2. So basically, f of 2 equals negative 2. What about f of 11 if f of x equals 1 half x plus 5? Our first step is to write the function f of x equals 1 half x plus 5. Next, substitute in that 11. So f of 11 equals 1 half times 11 plus 5. So f of 11 is going to equal half of 11 is 5 and a half. So we can write that as a decimal. You could also write that as the fraction 5 and a half plus 5. So f of 11 equals 10.5 or 10 and a half. Again, if you wanted to write your final answer as 10 and 1 half as a fraction. So f of 11 equals 10.5 or 10 and 1 half, and those work. Also a way to get 21 halves, but these two are probably your best answers. Let's continue on to function tables. Now you can organize the input, rule, and output into a function table. The variable for the domain is called the independent variable because it can be any number. The variable for the range is called the dependent variable because it depends on the domain. So choose four values for x to complete the function table for the function f of x equals x minus 7. Then state the domain and range of the function. Well, let's put in some negatives, a zero, and some positives for our x. And we can come up with these. You can come up with any four real numbers that you'd like. Now, I would keep it simple, so I would use something like negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. I mean, could you use a thousand, a million, a billion? Sure, but you're the ones who are going to have to calculate with that, so I would keep it simple. Now, let's substitute in the negative 1s for x, so we would have negative 1 minus 7. We would have 0 minus 7, 1 minus 7 and 2 minus 7. Well, negative 1 minus 7 is negative 8. 0 minus 7 is negative 7. 1 minus 7 is negative 6. And 2 minus 7 is negative 5. So there is our completed function table. Now the domain, as it says, are the independent variables. And in this case, it's our x. So the way we're going to write this is to say, well, domain is D, then I'll write a colon, and then a brace, and list the domains from um, least to greatest. So negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 are our domains. The range, those are our dependent variables, or in this case our f of x values. And again, we're going to write that with a colon, a brace, and from least to greatest, negative 8, negative 7, negative 6, negative 5. And that is the notation that we can use to write our domains and our ranges. Now, let's stop and reflect before we finish. What are the similarities and difference among the terms domain, range, independent variable, and dependent variable? Well, we can say that the domain is the set of all input values for the independent variable.
then the value of the independent variable influences the value of the dependent variable. Oops. And then lastly, the range is the set of all output values of the dependent variable. So they're all related. Certainly similarities and differences. Let's go on to our last examples. We're going to relate the domain, the range, the independent, dependent, and write functions. A scrapbooking store is selling rubber stamps for $4.95 each. The total sales f of n is a function of the number of rubber stamps n sold. So our first step is to identify the independent and dependent variables. So for part d, what depends on what? Well, the total sales depends on the number of stamps sold. So the number of stamps which is R N is the independent variable and the total sales which is our f of n is the dependent variable And again, since the total sales, f of n, depends on the number of stamps sold, the number of stamps is the independent variable, and the total sales is the dependent variable. What values of the domain and range make sense for this situation? Well, can we have negative stamps sold? Not really. So we're going to say for this only whole numbers make sense for the domain which remember the domain here is our stamps sold because you cannot buy a fraction of a stamp Now, the range itself, well, that should be, if you think you're going to get $4.95 a stamp, and then if you multiply that by 2, to get 2 stamps, it would be $9. And by 3, well, they're all going to be multiples of $4.95. So we can say the range will be multiples of 495, 495 hundredths. Now to write a function for total sales, if we think about this, 
our function f of n is going to equal well, the $4.95 times the number of stamps sold, so just n. Does that make sense? f of n, which is the total sales, is going to equal $4.95 per stamp times the number of stamps. And now we can use that function in order to find the value of 5 stamps by simply simpli or substituting the 5 in for n. And $4.95 times 5, well that's going to equal $24.75. And that's it. Hope you learned something along the way. Good luck.